Hello everyone, and welcome to my seventh Linda tutorial. This one is going to be about animations. Um, now, um, the main focus of this is about how to render animations because I've had a lot of questions lately about how to do that. So I figured I'd show you a few things as well because that's sort of quite a s quick process. So um, first, to, to animate an object, you just need to open up a timeline, which you can either do by right clicking on the side of your screen until those little arrows come up, right click split area and give it about that much then you just change this to a timeline and that gives you the timeline um, you can do it without the timeline because it tells you what frame you're on here but I find it so much easier to animate with the timeline um, so first thing you need to do is press I while your mouse is in the 3D space and then press loc rot scale so that's a location rotation and scale it saves all those so that your object um because if you don't if you just save location and rotation for this frame and then if i went to frame 60 for example and i was to rotate it move it and scale it and then press i and save it as a loc rot scale then when i go back here it's the same scale again so you want to save everything about that object where it was so that it is as you saw it when you first did it so I'll just press back and we'll go back to our first frame um, now as you probably saw just before it's really easy to animate things you just need to go to another frame now each of these is about I think 25 is one second is 25 frames so if you go to 25, that's exactly one second. So um, you can actually change the timeline and the view thing to make it so that it shows seconds instead. See, so that's one second, two seconds, three seconds, four seconds, all that stuff. But um, frames is sort of better. Um, you can also do that by pressing T, which I didn't know. So there you go. Um, so we're going to go to frame 30, and we're going to grab this and move it across to there and then press I um, location rotation scale so that means no matter what it's going to move from there to there at the same location rotation and scale then if we'll go to frame 60 and we will grab it and move it up to there looks good and then we're going to rotate it and we're going to so it just rotate it and then press I and we're only going to save the location and rotation right and then we're going to grab it and move it down here and we're going to scale it really oh sorry no first we gotta go to frame 90 then grab it move it down to here and we're going to press S and make it really tiny and then press I location rotation and scale so these three frames here have saved scale but this one hasn't so that means that the scale change from this one to this one goes through that frame right and it's better depicted in the window called IPO curve editor so as you can see that's what the that's the transformation of our object as a graph if you're nerdy you'll know, know what graphs are <laughs> If you didn't go to school, then you won't. Um, so yeah, so it has a, a legend on this side that tells you what all the things mean. So this is the location X, so I can actually manipulate it by going into edit mode and grabbing the points and manipulating them. So you can change your animation in, in this window. You don't have to do it um, in the 3D window. You can just do it in this one. Um, but that's sort of a bit hard to see what's happening and um, also you'll notice that the these curves for the graph are curvy and sometimes you don't want things to sort of speed up then go to somewhere and then slow down again you want it sort of to be very sort of get there and stop kind of straight motion and to do that you just select one of the points and press you select the points that you want to 
be straight and you press V and that straightens them so now if you have a look it'll speed up slowly and then just suddenly stop and then we'll go backwards um, you can also move these points around so you have a very arcing curves that will slow down gradually all that kind of stuff um, but yeah experiment with all that kind of stuff um, so I'm going to go back to the 3D view and we're going to render this um, because it's only 90 frames long we don't want to render all 250 frames because that would just take forever um, so we press 90 enter thing we want to do is we want to press numpad 0 so we see it from our camera and go back and play it and make sure you can see the whole animation and as you can see we can't so we'll just grab this move it that way and um, go to the top view grab it move it out a bit and now we can see the whole animation so it's all between this one here and the best way to illustrate that is to turn on passport so that is what you will render it's not the stuff inside the pink line it's the stuff inside that first dotted line and um so yeah um so now we're going to render this um we're going to go to just go to side view or something uh, what you need to do is you need to go down here and go to the last one which is scene and before you render an animation you need to change a few things um, if you don't change these you will get like, 90 images so you're going to change JPEG change it to QuickTime you can change it to AVI RAW if you prefer but QuickTime is just as easy and I know it works so I'm going to do that one um, yep so just I'll accept the defaults uh, then you go over here and the top one is where it renders to so you want to change that to somewhere you can remember instead of having to try and find that temp folder so yeah, see how much stuff is in there um, so I'm gonna go and put it on my desktop so I know where it is um, then what we can do is we just go select output pictures um, it actually does it for movies as well just it's just pictures and um, then we just go click anim and that will start rendering each frame um, this will take forever so I'm just gonna pause the video and resume it when it's done okay well um the render has finished it says up here 90 frames and it's not doing anymore so it's, it's done uh, then you just press escape and then you can minimize blender and minimize the render thingy and all that stuff and it should be right down here it should be named something like zero zero depending on how many frames you have zero zero one zero zero ninety um yeah so and if we just double click that you can give it a moment yeah here here's our um animation opened up in quick time and we're going to play it And there we go, that's how you make, render, and save an animation in Blender. Um, thanks for watching, I am Hamster Hill, and uh, happy blending.